Hey everybody, Thrifty Mocha here. And to celebrate Cinco de Mayo, I am having a couple of drinks and playing Alter Ego. So why don't we just get started? As you can see in Alter Ego, you are the white character that kind of looks like Finn from uh, Adventure Time. And you switch between your Alter Ego, the little outline, as you can see on the left side, not on the right side. And uh, this is played on the NES, the NES emulated game. It's got great 8 bit music. I'm a big fan of it. Not too over the top. And your goal for each level is collect these floating rectangle purple things. And to get them, you just have to switch between yourself and your alter ego. One of the mechanics is, uh, as you can see on the top left corner, you have your lives, which is marked by the, the white character. And you have your ego swaps, which is marked by the outline character. And for this level, you just have zero. So it's more avoid the, the enemy. Here's where it starts to get a little complicated. You have these green floating pickups, and only your ego can pick them up. But it's not too hard just yet. Now there's skulls. Those skulls are insta-kill, as long as, as you touch them, they're just pure death. And this is the first instance of a vertical ego swap. Now this is a pretty tough one. It does not require any ego swaps, but I will use some just to make sure it goes fast enough. So I'm not wasting any time on any of these levels. And every once in a while you'll complete a stage and uh, gain an extra life. I think it may be tied to having an extra ego left over, maybe? And you can, of course, switch egos while in mid-drop, as you saw there. And it'll come in handy right here. Uh, okay, I died, whatever. I have plenty of lives. I have eight ego swaps, seven now. That's much, much more than I need. Now this is where it gets to be a little bit tough. You have to time you have to start timing your ego swaps very carefully. And you can run out. The game starts to play hardball. And yeah. oh. Well, I guess I died. Whatever, still plenty of lives to go around. Just gotta collect these purple rectangles and the green ones too. Ooh, this is pretty tough. This really requires you to, uh, to time these enemies' movements very closely. Because if you do it at the right time, you might get trapped. And you have just enough swaps to be able to complete this level. And, uh, while I'm waiting, I guess I'll tell you what I'm drinking right now. I'm drinking Hop Wallop. It's a very, very hoppy, hoppy beer. Well, maybe I should have been paying more attention, but hey, that's what extra lives are for. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't even explain the drinking game for this one. Uh, every time I die. 
the end. That's it. And that's another one. I'm guessing these pickups are called pixels because it's called the level's called 16 pixels. Although it's uh, never explained what they're actually called. This is a very simple game. It's it's very reminiscent of early NES games. Not too details, not too big. One screen. Oh, this is a little bit tough. gonna wait out these skulls. I'm guessing they're skulls. Not actually sure. Right, you just climb up this ladder, grab a couple, switch over. Wait for these skulls to pass. Uh, you have to be really stingy with these ego swamps. end up in trouble. I guess I'm, I'm drinking for every time I beat a level, because that's what I've been doing. You have to really pay attention to where uh, these pickups are located, especially if there are two colors of them. You see, if I had started on the other side, I would have actually not had enough swaps to be able to actually beat this level. Oh, that shouldn't be too hard. I have two swaps. And, uh, okay, kind of called it close there, but still made it. Now, the game makes you think that you want to dodge those skulls, but you can just swap between them. Now, this takes a little bit of thought. Just drop down, wait for the skull below you to pass. You can swap and grab the ladder midair. It's that just that simple. Oh, this this one gives me a big, big problems, troubles, whatever. It took me a long time. My first try, I actually, had to ask somebody for help, and I screw screw up anyway. Whatever. Second time's a charm. Maybe third time. The trick is, with these falling platforms, you want to have one switch left over by the time you're at the end of them. So you can get this last one. These levels are very symmetrical. I guess that's just because of the nature of the game. What you want to do here is you want to swap over, destroy that bridge over there, so you don't destroy this one right here, which you actually need to cross. And then wait for these enemies to pass, drop down, and give your alter ego a high five. This is a lot easier than it seems. It's just a lot of swapping back and forth. It's mainly looking at uh, your alter ego to see if he's actually on an enemy. I mean, they give you plenty, plenty of, of uh, ego swaps. See? You have just enough. And this this part of this uh, this level can be done in any order you want. You can take the top left one like I did. You can take the bottom right one. 
you could go ahead and uh, grab the ones on the right, which... Okay, I screwed up, so... Demoing the pause uh, restart button. So again, this is played on an NES emulator. It does have Windows and Mac versions, which I don't know why you would even bother with either of those if you have an emulator. The controls are so tight. And I'm taking a drink. I wonder why this stage is called After the War. Oh well, I guess I'll never know. Yeah, it just... Oh man, this this game just takes a lot of thinking. It's really kind of hard to talk over. I do like the music, though. It's, it's pretty nice. Ooh. I actually like the stage a lot. Because uh, it's basically... Oh, close call there. Um basically, uh, you have to really pay attention to both sides to, in order to figure out the puzzle the first time. And then the last part is actually skill-based. It, well, I guess I don't have any skill, so, drink. So, uh, now that I've explained the entire stage, how about those skull guys, huh? How about that pallet? And there we go. Just drop down two falling platforms and you're done. Now this stage is... has a bunch of spikes which don't really do anything because you can't jump up and... I don't even know if it's possible to touch those spikes. But again... You have plenty of Ego Swaps to beat this one. Actually, I think this is my favorite stage of all. Because you really have to think about every single action. You have just enough to actually beat the stage. And I gotta get those green ones. There we go. And right now it's just a waiting game for this goal to go back up. And then I'll just drop down and grab those two pixels. Hmm. This level's called Fake Wall. I wonder why. Well, I can't get at those, but I can get them over here. Ooh, surprise, surprise. Now it's all a matter of not getting killed right here and swap. Yeah. <sighs> Most of this game is really just waiting for these skull guys to disappear. Or not disappear, just go away. Vamoose. You know, even though I've beaten this game before, uh, it's still pretty difficult. Like, I, I memorized most of the puzzles, but it's still, uh, it's still pretty tough. And here's the final level. You have zero ego swaps. It's all about dodging. Dodging and planning ahead. And you'll see why in a second. See this top guy? You have to trap him somewhere in order to get um, 
all these things. Or you could, um, walk around him. He has a couple of different ways to get around. I normally like to, uh, get him trapped on one of the left or right sides. But I think I'll take a risky right here and try and do some pixel perfect. Yep, there we go. Okay. Yep. And, uh, that's it. After all that, all we get for our hard work is a well done screen. All levels clear. And now the little guys have uh, the ability to jump up and down. And now at the same time. So I guess uh, that's it. Well, everybody, happy Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo. Uh, this has been Thrifty Mocha. Hope you enjoyed.